Hello and welcome to Viking TV. My name is Neil and I'm based in Viking's London office where I've worked for the past 15 years. And I'm delighted to be here today to talk to you about one of my favourite itineraries into the midnight sun. So with this itinerary, you start off in either Greenwich in London or Bergen in Norway and you visit such highlights such as Edinburgh, the Orkney Islands, the Shetland. You go right up to North Cape, so you're above the Arctic Circle, Tromso, as well as the fantastic Geranger Fjord and Bergen, which is one of my favourite cities. So sit back, relax, and let's go into the midnight sun. Experience the wonders of Norway and the British Isles on this 15-day journey with Viking. In fascinating Bergen, you'll have plenty of time to explore its intriguing history with an overnight stay. Then it's on to the majestic Geirangerfjord, where rugged beauty is found around every corner. You'll sail the inside passage and cross the Arctic Circle to Tromsø, with its Arctic Cathedral and Polaria Museum. Honningsborg and the dramatic North Cape come next, followed by the craggy peaks of the Lofoten Islands, home to ancient Viking traditions. On Scotland's Shetland Islands, meet some of the world's friendliest residents. The Orkney Islands bring rugged coastlines and windows into ancient times. While Scotland's capital, Edinburgh, presents an intriguing collection of medieval and neoclassical architecture. Your Viking journey concludes with a sail along the Thames River, through the barrier and into London's Maritime Greenwich, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, where you'll enjoy an overnight stay so you can take in this regal city and all its splendour. So let's take a closer look at this 15 day midnight sun itinerary, which operates in two directions, either starting in Bergen and ending in London, or the direction we're looking at today from London to Bergen. So what's the best direction to sail in? Well, there's no real difference as you visit the same ports and cities in either direction, and you have an overnight on board in both London and Bergen, regardless of the direction. One thing I'll point out is the time that you arrive or depart in London can vary by the date of your cruise and the sailing along the Thames River is pretty spectacular in my view. So check with our contact centre who can advise you of the expected times we will navigate this waterway. Regardless of what time of day or night, get your cameras at the ready as you won't want to miss this view. The map shown on screen gives you a better idea of the itinerary in question. You'll start off in London, where you'll have an overnight stay on board, travel north to Edinburgh, my home city, further north still to the Orkney and Shetland Islands. Now, as you head towards and above the Arctic Circle, you'll notice the days become much longer. As we journey through the Lofoten Islands, day becomes night, reaching Tromsø, the capital of Arctic Norway. Finally, we're on top of the world in Honingsvag and the land of the midnight sun before we travel south to Bergen, visiting the spectacular Geranger Fjord along the way. As well as viewing some of the most spectacular views on land, we actually have four scenic sailing days on this cruise, where you'll want front row seats in the Explorer Lounge, or be out on deck, because day or night, you do not want to miss out on what's around the next corner. So first things first, when's the best time to go? Our Into the Midnight Sun itinerary operates in June and July, and we're on sale for both the 2022 and the 2023 season. So currently we have six departures in total, covering 2022 and 2023, so availability is always very limited on these sailings. There are lots of highlights on this voyage, however, you're heading to the land of the midnight sun, where the sun never sets above the Arctic Circle. Temperatures can vary considerably, June and July in the UK is generally very pleasant, with temperatures during the day ranging from around 16 to 22 degrees centigrade, so around 62 to 74, 75 Fahrenheit. In Norway, it can be just as varied, with temperatures from around 13 degrees centigrade, so 56 Fahrenheit, to 1920 degrees centigrade, which is around 68 to 70 Fahrenheit. However, nothing is guaranteed, especially the weather in this part of the world. So always pack for every eventuality. And I always recommend that you wear layers, 
So if it is a bit cooler, you're well prepared. As the saying goes, there is no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothing. So t-shirts, jumpers, a fleece, plus a waterproof jacket are always recommended. But in addition, always remember your sunscreen and sunglasses, as it's definitely a land for all seasons. One thing I'd like to mention is we sometimes get asked if you'll see the northern lights on this cruise. Well, the answer is no. You would need to travel in the winter time to try and witness the northern lights. And thankfully, we also have a voyage departing then as well. So, midnight sun summer, northern lights winter. Prior to joining your cruise, we offer two extension packages which give you an ideal opportunity to explore more on land before you embark on the midnight sun cruise. And I'd also recommend pre-extension if you're flying on a long haul flight, so at least you have time to acclimatise before you get on board. So the extensions I'd like to highlight are shown on the screen. The first one is a two night hotel stay in a very central London location. And this is ideal for independent travellers who like to get out and about and explore the city, and maybe take in some theatre in London's busy West End. And London's a great city to navigate on foot or using their underground train system. Or you can learn about Sir Winston Churchill on our five night extension, Churchill's Britain, which gives you privileged access to the Churchill War Rooms, plus a visit to his family home at Chartwell. We have an excellent video at viking.com, which will tell you more about this unique extension. So 15 days, nine guided tours, and a voyage that you will remember forever starts in London. It's day one, and if you've arranged air travel through Viking, they'll transfer you from the airport to your ship, which will be waiting for you in the port of Greenwich. I absolutely love this slide on screen, as it shows you how central we actually dock. One of the benefits of travelling with Viking on our small ships is that we can get closer to the heart of the city. In the foreground, you can see Greenwich, and the tall buildings in the background are that of Canary Wharf where many financial institutions have their headquarters. This part of the voyage is like being on a river cruise, as we are so close to shore, everybody comes out and waves as the ship passes, takes pictures, and there's a real excitement as we begin to navigate the Thames River. Many of the large ocean liners dock up to two hours away, whereas with Viking, you can be in centre London within 30 minutes. It's around five minutes on a tender to take you right into the heart of the Royal Borough of Greenwich, with its maze of small streets and alleys, with local independent shops, restaurants and cafes to spend a lazy afternoon. Our included tour today is a two-hour walking tour of Greenwich, learning about the history of this Royal Borough and taking in Cutty Sark, the world's only surviving tea clipper and fastest sailing ship but it was built in 1869. You'll visit Greenwich Market with its arts and crafts stalls and learn the history of the old Royal Navy College, which is the centrepiece of this historic area. In London, we're proud to offer you three privileged access tours. The first is a visit to the home and private museum of world-renowned architect Sir John Soane. During this after hours tour, you'll see collections of marble sculptures, paintings and furniture. You'll also view paintings by Canaletto and Turner, as well as a 3,000 year old Egyptian sarcophagus. Or visit the Tower of London after hours to learn about the many great events during its thousand year history. The tower has served as a royal palace, fortress, prison, place of execution and jewel house. And here you can witness the age-old tradition of the ceremony of the keys performed by the chief of the beef eaters. We have around six optional excursions available from Greenwich. However, as we're also docked overnight, there's time to explore independently. You can take a hop-on, hop-off water taxi from Greenwich Pier to Westminster in around 20 to 30 minutes. I'd recommend purchasing a prepaid card which allows you to travel on buses and underground routes across the city. As you have this unique opportunity of spending overnight in port, it gives you ample time to explore. It's day three, and after two days in London, you'll enjoy a day sailing on the North Sea, where you can really get to know your ship. The great thing is our ships are identical, 
So if you've travelled with us an ocean previously, it won't take you long to remind yourself of where everything is. And if you're new to biking, welcome. And I'd say within 30 minutes, you'll have found your bearings and your favourite spot on the ship. One tradition that happens without fail on board is afternoon tea in the Winter Garden. And this is a unique, bright and airy space with lots of natural light. Every day at 4pm, you'll be accompanied by the classical trio or a resident pianist or guitarist as you indulge in a menu of teas, sandwiches, cakes and scones. And remember, with Viking, there is absolutely no charge for this afternoon tea on board. It's day four, and you may have enjoyed breakfast in the World Cafe or on your private veranda. However, I'm very excited to tell you it's 8am and you're in Edinburgh, Scotland's capital, my home city, and it's time to get out and explore. We anchored just outside Edinburgh in the fishing port of Newhaven in the north of the city, and our tenders will take you ashore, and from there the centre of Edinburgh is only around 20 minutes away. Today's included tour is a four-hour panoramic tour taken in the highlights of Edinburgh, including the new town with its Georgian architecture and the old town with its cobbled streets, including the Royal Mile running from the castle, which you can see on screen, right down to Holyrood House. One of our optional tours in Edinburgh takes you to the 12th century Edinburgh Castle, where you can see the crown jewels, along with a visit to the 16th century Holyrood Palace, an official residence of Queen Elizabeth II and home to Mary, Queen of Scots and Bonnie Prince Charlie. One of our privileged access optional tours gives an exceptionally rare glimpse into Scottish royal history on our tour at Broom Hall House. After remaining closed for centuries, Broom Hall House, the ancestral home of the Bruce clan, descended from Robert the Bruce, will open its doors for your exclusive visit. The Bruce family has been at the heart of Scotland's history since the 12th century, when Robert the Bruce took the throne and secured Scottish independence from England at the Battle of Bannockburn. A member of the Bruce family will greet you, and following a welcome drink, you can enjoy a fascinating journey through a thousand years of Scottish history. Broom Hall boasts many elegant furnishings, an internationally important collection of fine art and priceless heirlooms, such as the Sword of State of King Robert the Bruce. Edinburgh and the surrounding areas are full of history and you can pay a visit to the Royal Yacht Britannia or, for golf enthusiasts, there's an opportunity to visit the historic Royal and Ancient Golf Club of St Andrews that dates back to 1754 and that's approximately two hours from Edinburgh. Having left Edinburgh 22 years ago, every time I go back I rediscover places I haven't seen for years and discover the city as a tourist. One of my favourite areas is the new town with its handsome Georgian architecture and quirky shops and cafes. And Edinburgh is a really accessible city with lots of greenery and some of the best views are from the castle area where you can gain uninterrupted views of the city. Now one thing you'll notice is that there are no skyscrapers with the tallest building, St Mary's Church, being only 90 metres high. We leave Edinburgh at 6pm and head further north, and as we progress on our journey, we'll learn more about the Vikings' influence in this part of the world. After a good night's sleep, we'll wake up on day five and the rugged beauty of the Orkney Islands. Kirkwall, the capital of the Scottish Orkney Islands, is closely tied to Viking history, and the city was first mentioned in the 13th century Norse Orkney Inga saga depicting a time when Norse earls ruled the region. Today, the city is rich in ruins and relics from the Viking Age. Our included tour today is a panoramic tour of the island lasting just under three hours, which takes in Strom Ness, a picturesque town with a working fishing harbour, as well as a scenic drive to the Ring of Broadguard, a ceremonial of 27 remaining standing stones dating back almost 5,000 years, and it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. You might take in the Stone Age settlement of Scarabray, which is called the Scottish Pompeii, because of its remarkably preserved dwellings, and Scarabray is actually older than Stonehenge. 
If you want to get out and explore the great outdoors, we also have some walking tours along the coastal paths that you can experience with a local expert guide. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Orkneys have strong connections with the Vikings, who ruled these rugged landscapes from the 9th to the 13th century. So let's find out a bit more about their presence. In the 8th century, Scotland's rugged Orkney Islands were coveted by the Vikings. The vast, fertile lands and easy access to Britain ultimately proved irresistible and the archipelago fell under Norse control for nearly 600 years. While the Vikings have long since vanished, part of their culture remains, including language, like the name Orkney, shortened from the Viking original, Orkneyar. Perhaps the best known area of the Orkneys is Scapa Flow, where the calm surface of this waterway belies its turbulent past. It was here at the end of World War I that more than 50 German warships were scuttled by their own sailors. Tragedy struck again in 1939, when the British warship Royal Oak was torpedoed and sunk. Today, only the block ships remain, silent witnesses to the tragedies that unfolded in these waters. One of the Orkney's more unusual sites is a tiny chapel built by Italian prisoners of war. Using ingenuity and imagination, they transformed a corrugated steel building, plus whatever scraps they could find, into a sacred work of art. In the heart of Kirkwall lies another treasure, the Cathedral of St. Magnus. Built by the Norse Earls of Orkney nearly 900 years ago, it holds the unusual distinction of being owned by the city rather than the church, and of possessing its own dungeon. The Orkneys also have remnants of long-lost civilizations. The Ring of Brodgar and the Standing Stones of Stennis start the imagination running. These Neolithic monuments may be the oldest in the British Isles, dating back to approximately 2,500 BC. And along the coast, the settlement at Skara Bray is older still. It's the best preserved Neolithic village in Western Europe and offers a fascinating window into the past. Scotland's remarkable Orkney Islands present an extraordinary tapestry of natural and cultural wonders. I hope you too will do what I did and explore the heart of this archipelago for yourself. Now, before we leave Orkney, if you're a lover of whiskey or you want to learn more about the making of this national drink, you must experience our optional privileged access tour of the Highland Park Distillery, where you'll learn more about the ingredients and processes, along with tastings from the world's most northerly distillery. Your experience of just under six hours concludes with a bottle of Highland Park to take home with you. Now, you don't have to wait until you get home to savour the delights of this unique blend. No. Remember, at Viking, we have a no corkage fee, and you're welcome to bring your bottle of Highland Park along with any other alcoholic purchases back on board to enjoy at no charge. It is now time to say goodbye to the Orkney Islands as we sail to our next stop, the Shetland Islands. We're on day six at 7am and welcome to Lerick here on the Scottish Shetland Islands. Lerick is a small town and easy to explore independently on foot. This is one of my own shots, not up to the standard of the other images on this presentation. However, it was taken on a warm, sunny day in July, just a short walk from Lerick's High Street, so you never know just what's around the corner. We offer six optional excursions to choose from. However, our two-hour included panoramic tour takes you by motor coach to the main sites of the Shetlands, along with a visit to a local Shetland pony breeder and you can learn more about these small ponies, which have existed on the islands for over 2,000 years. Let's discover more about these unique animals. The windswept Shetland Islands, where the Atlantic Ocean collides with the North Sea, is home to some unique and fascinating characters. 
I was born and bred in the house that I'm still in, and I've stayed in Shetland all my life. <laughs> Carol Fuller is a wrangler and breeder whose family has long loved the island's iconic residents. There have been three generations that's had the Shetland ponies. <laughs> They're part of my life. While the Shetland pony dates to the Bronze Age, it was primarily breeding with Dürle ponies brought by the Vikings that created the sprightly breed we see today. Oh, their spirits is pretty high. They, they have high spirits. <laughs> Everyone has a different personality. They're a big white one. She always stands with her head up, lugs up, and ears up and everything. See me. <laughs> Though the hardy Shetland pony has long thrived here, its life has rarely been easy. When I was young, the ponies wasn't for fun, they were work horses. All the craft work was done on the ponies, they were no tractors. They did the carting in the hay, carting in the corn, plowing the rigs, everything was done in a pony. And in 1847, when the British banned children from the coal mines, the tough Shetland pony went to work underground. For years, they were in constant demand, since these resilient, sure-footed wonders could move loads of coal up to 3,000 miles a year. They were usually down two weeks and up two weeks. The ponies were treated very well, and they say that the ponies were treated much better than the main. <laughs> In such a spacious, relaxed setting, one could easily assume that raising the highly intelligent, extremely patient Shetland pony would be a piece of cake. I was quickly assured that was not the case. No, no, no. <laughs> you must be good to them. You have to be good to them. But you have to make sure that they know you're the boss. It's just like a dog. <laughs> Much like an artist who hates to part with their paintings, Carol often holds on to her ponies. They stay and become part of the family. At one point, I had six generations. <laughs> if they go from me as a foal, they go to some other body. But if they live past a year old, they're beside me for their life. My oldest mare was 35. She was a good old lady. She was a very good old lady. <laughs> One thing's for sure, Shetlands are highly addictive. They even hooked Queen Elizabeth, who rode them throughout her childhood. While these precocious ponies top out at only 42 inches, don't let their diminutive stature fool you. Pound for pound, they're actually the strongest of the horse family, able to pull twice their body weight. And one thing they're certainly not short of is personality. I always say they're like the weather clock. <laughs> Whichever way the wind is coming from, you'll always see them standing with their rear ends to the wind. <laughs> I hope you too will do as I did and pay a visit to Carol and her ponies in the remarkable Shetland Islands. A few other options include a visit to Musa Island, an uninhabited island just 1.5 miles long and 1 mile wide, where you can enjoy a guided tour and embark on a 3 mile 2 hour walk, observing local wildlife including grey seals, arctic terns and great skewers. Another great option would be for you to visit the ancient Jarlshof to explore one of the most interesting and complex archaeological sites ever excavated in Britain. More than 5,000 years old, it features a remarkable sequence of stone structures and the Norse longhouse here tells the story of a thriving Viking community. It's now time to relax. It's been a busy few days, we're halfway through the voyage and this is the perfect opportunity to explore the ship and take in the breathtaking views in this part of the world. I'd be happy just to keep this shot on screen for the remainder of the presentation, as it's a constant reminder of just how beautiful our ships are. Sleek Scandinavian elegance, carrying just 930 guests, with lots of space both outdoors and indoors, that you wonder where all your fellow guests are. 
This area is called the living room, and it's a great set in the morning or afternoon to have a coffee and a fresh pastry and chat to your fellow guests. And remember, all speciality teas and coffees are included with Viking. In the evening, it's also the setting for Munch Moments, where you can learn more about the works of Edward Munch on a digital screen while listening to some live music. On a voyage like this, you need to be on a ship where you can see outside and be outside as much as possible. On deck two, you'll find a wraparound deck, something that's missing on many of the larger ships, and it's a great place to do your morning walks. However, this image is of the Explorer's Lounge. Two floors of floor-to-ceiling windows at the front of the ship, covering deck seven and eight. This is where you want to be as you navigate the stunning coastline. And it's home to Mamsons, serving Norwegian favourites, including some of the best waffles you will ever taste, using a recipe taken from our global chairman, Torsten Hagen's mum. Or you might just want to sit on the private veranda of your stateroom with room service and catch up on the book that you've been meaning to read. These staterooms, whichever grade you choose, are equipped with everything you will need for a comfortable stay. There's lots of room under the bed to store your luggage. There's underfloor heating in the bathroom along with a non-steam mirror. We've got plug points and USB charging ports at each side of the bed. And not forgetting free drinking water replenished daily. Plus a mini bar with either soft drinks or alcoholic beverages depending on your stateroom grade. You might ask the question, why would I ever want to leave? As you make your way north from London, the days get progressively longer until day becomes night and night becomes day, as we officially reach the land of the midnight sun. Over the next two days of sailing, you are in the land of the midnight sun, where the sun never sets. It does take a bit of getting used to, as you can be out on deck thinking it's nine at night, you glance at your watch and it's two in the morning. But this image on screen now was taken just after midnight and shows you just why you never want to go to bed. You want to be up all night on deck, waiting to see what's around the next bend. This is what you're going for. Even in the height of the summer, the mountains are still snow-capped. Pictures really don't do this itinerary justice, if I'm honest. You need to see this for yourself, experience the midnight sun and life in the Arctic. One of the many highlights of this voyage is when you get to this point on the journey. It's 8am, it's day 9, we're in the Arctic Circle and we're in Honingsvag. The ship docks just a very short walk to the town centre and the main industry in this region is fishing. So let's find out a little bit more. Along Norway's majestic coast, there's long been a tradition of harvesting a living from the ocean with hardy seafarers leaving safe harbours in the hunt for fish. Today, these waters still hold that precious bounty, and they're ready to challenge those who love the outdoors, albeit in a much more fun and comfortable way. Line fishing is very popular, but hand lining is the technique many locals prefer. It's quick and easy to learn, since all you need is fishing line, lure and a bit of good luck. In some of Norway's more remote bays, an exotic prize requires a different kind of fishing. The catch? The highly prized Red King Crab, measuring up to six feet between their claws. At water's edge, the traditional tents of the native Sami people are a relaxing place to sample these tasty crustaceans from the deep. The quest for fish can extend into the fjords, where sparkling rivers offer a tranquil setting in which to experience the pristine wilderness, while enjoying the sheer delight of mastering an entirely new skill. <laughs> Norway's breathtaking waterways are some of the best places I've found to get in touch with life as the locals live in. I hope you'll do as I did and head out to explore the wonders of Norway for yourself. This iconic image will be known to many. Today's included excursion lasts just under four hours and takes you to this very point, Nordka 
or North Cape. You're on top of the world and you're looking out at absolutely nothing. There's nothing for miles and miles, but what an experience. Sometimes it can be misty up here, but when the mist clears and you see the iconic glow perched in a cliff, over a thousand feet high, it's simply breathtaking. And you have to pinch yourself to remind yourself that you're actually here. There's a lot to do here, including a museum and a screening room, which charts the history of this area. Definitely do not forget your camera for this one. There's around seven optional tours to choose from in an awnings bag. However, one of my firm favourites was the King Crab Safari. It was absolutely brilliant. You take a short walk from the ship to the meeting point where you change into these waterproof floating suits. Now, these aren't the most flattered in the world. However, they are absolutely necessary for this excursion. You then board a deep sea raft or rib. You head out on the waters of the fjord with your guide and proceed to catch these gigantic king crags, measuring up to 6 feet and weighing up to 22 pounds. You then head on land where the crabs are prepared for your lunch in a traditional sami tent. If you're a lover of the sea, and especially crabs, and don't mind some exhilaration, this is definitely the excursion for you. We're now heading south. It's day 10, would you believe, and we're still above the Arctic Circle as we arrive in Tromso. Tromso, Paris of the North, capital of the Arctic, and one of my firm favourites in either summer or winter. The ship docks literally in the town centre, and it's around 10 minutes walk away to the main shopping street. In Tromso, you'll find a mix of neoclassical and traditional wooden buildings. But in Tromso until 6pm, and there's multiple shore excursion opportunities, your included tour lasts around three hours and shows you the highlights of the gateway to the Arctic, including the stunning Arctic Cathedral and its beautiful stained glass windows. An optional excursion here is a visit to the Tromso Wilderness Centre, set in a mountainous area outside Tromso. Now in the winter, these huskies take part in dog sledging activities. In the summer, you can go hiking with your very own husky harnessed around your waist you'll then trot along with your furry friend. It's a great excursion for the animal lovers amongst us. Now the image on screen now is one of my own photos that I took and it's separate to this journey. However, it was taken at just after midnight above the Arctic. And I just wanted to show you the sort of light and colours you can experience at points along this journey. As I've said before, you will never want to go to your bed. It's day 11 and we dock in Lake Ness at 8 a.m. We're in the stunning Lofoten Islands. And when I say stunning, that's an understatement. Mountains, beaches, a traditional way of life. This area will definitely be one of the many highlights of this trip. The islands stretch 118 miles into the Norwegian Sea from Norway's coast. And Lofoten is home to fishing harbours and the way of life is still very tranquil. Fishing is still the main industry in Lofoten, and this picture shows traditional rurubus, which are brightly coloured fishermen's houses, and many times you'll see stockfish or cod drying outside on vast racks. Now, an included excursion lasts around three hours and shows you the highlights of this stunning region. To get the best out of Lofoten, I would recommend doing at least one optional excursion, and as we have multiple times for the included tour, you can aim to fit in both an included and an optional. There's wildlife in abundance in the Lofoten, and a recommended excursion would be the Sea Eagle Safari. Lasting around two hours, you don your waterproof suits again and take to the sea on a rib searching for the sea eagles. And these sea eagles have wingspans reaching over six feet. Definitely a must-do for the nature lovers. Now you'll probably be familiar with the Viking Way, our handcrafted range of excursions, giving you the opportunity to experience local life, working world, or privileged access, where we would give you rare experiences that only Viking can. On our website, in My Viking Journey, we detail excursions available to you on each cruise. The great thing is that they're all graded by excursion type, whether that's privileged access, sightseeing, nature, so you can pick the excursion that's right for you and includes what you want to see. 
You can also choose an excursion based on fitness level, whether that's easy, moderate, or demanding. This Into the Midnight Sun Voyage offers a whole host of options, and there's far too many to mention on this presentation. But they include Nordic hikes, fishing, helicopter tours, to name but a few. And I can't stress enough, this voyage combines culture, scenery, and the option for soft adventure if you want it. It's now time to head further south. We're on day 12, and we have a day scenic cruising the Norwegian Sea. There's lots of areas of the ship to talk about, from the Infinity Pool and our Viking Heritage Centre, to the vast collection of artwork and the numerous entertainment options on board, including music by the Beatles, movies under the stars, or the Viking band playing in Torshaven, our cosy bar hidden away on deck too. But I want to highlight the Live Nordic Spa, found on deck one aboard all the ocean ships. Now, these are truly unique spaces where you can relax and unwind, and the facilities are free to use. Now, the image on screen is the changing rooms, and each changing room is equipped with a sauna and ice cold plunge pool. Ropes and slippers are provided, and you just need your key card to use the lockers, so no coins or keys to worry about. You then step from the changing rooms into this unique space, and here you'll find the hydrotherapy pool, steam room, jacuzzi, and warm heated beds that definitely help you relax. Not to forget the ice cold water bucket, which will certainly wake you up. Our onboard spa team are there to help and assist you and talk you through the facilities, so please use the spa. It's such a relaxing experience. And of course, the snow grotto, found on every Viking Ocean ship, and used in conjunction with the heat of the steam room, it really helps rejuvenate the skin. I'd recommend partaking in the Nordic bathing ritual, which is bookable for a small fee to really immerse yourself in Norwegian bathing traditions. We drop anchor at 8am on day 13, and it's the spectacular Garanger Fjord, home to three breathtaking waterfalls, the Seven Sisters, the Suter and the Bridal Veil, and thousand metre high mountains at either side. You'll most definitely be up early to get some spectacular shots of this outstanding scenery. Today's three-hour included tour takes you on the Eagles Bend Road, high up into the mountains, giving you spectacular views of the area and of the ship, while you navigate 11 hairpin bends to witness truly outstanding scenery. One optional to choose is heading out fishing in the waters of the Garanya Fjord on board a fishing boat. The Norwegian coast benefits from the warm currents of the Gulf Stream, making the water surrounding its long coastline full of plankton and the many species of fish that feed on them, including record-sized cod, haddock or mackerel that swim beneath the surface. Heading out to a mountain farm is another great option for something different, and here you'll have the opportunity to learn about traditional Norwegian farming here along the coast. You'll also sample goat's cheese and goat's car mills made here, and this tour includes spectacular views of the mountains and the fjord. Now this famous Norwegian cheese is called Jetost, and if you've ever tried one of the waffles and mamsons on board the ship, and have requested an extra helping of the cheese found on top, well here's how it's made. In the land of the northern lights, locals carved out a life amid Norway's imposing landscapes. But they're not the only ones who enjoy this rugged terrain. Goats thrive here too, and archaeologists say they may have roamed these lands for 5,000 years. And from these goats come my favourite cheese in the entire world, Norwegian Jetost, Norwegian brown goat cheese. Here, flink pike. Gjetost, also known as Brunost, can be traced back centuries to the high mountain Sjetir, the alpine pastures where the dairy maids worked in the spring and summer when the men were off to sea. It was here that Gjetost was invented in 1863 when Umhover started experimenting and stumbled upon the taste that grew into a phenomenon, the treasure for which Norwegians still thank the humble goat. Technically, Jetost is not a cheese at all. Instead of curd, the whey is used, combined with milk and cream. 
a process of simmering and stirring that takes several hours with the milk sugar caramelizing as the water evaporates. Then it's into the molds, and once cool, the yetust is ready to eat. This traditional cheese is from that summer farming up in the mountains. So it was a way to uh, preserve the milk, you know, the resource. Also, it was perfect to take away on uh, long voyages. This brown cheese you can keep for years. Norwegians love yetust and devour more than 12,000 tons of it every year. Locals believe you haven't really experienced Norway if you haven't feasted on Yetost. So when you're in Norway, remember the contribution these gentle creatures make to one of our favorite foods. But be careful, you may just be tempted to take one of these cute little Yetost makers home with you. Norway is a wonderland of traditions and we look forward to sharing with you her many treasures. Well, here we are on day 14 and we've arrived in Bergen. Nearly time to go home, but not quite yet. And we have an overnight stay on board in this bustling city. Bergen is one of my favourite cities and the ship docks near the Hanseatic region. And from there, it's a very short stroll into the centre of town with its shops, restaurants, bars and cafes. And it's surrounded by steep mountains, glaciers and fjords. Our included tour is a panoramic tour of Bergen, lasting around two hours, and it helps you get your bearings so you can explore the city at your leisure. One optional is our work and world excursion to visit the Dala Norway factory, and you can learn how these traditional jumpers are made. Or, for music lovers, I thoroughly recommend a visit to Trollhagen, home of the famous composer and pianist Edvard Grieg. Not only is it a stunning setting, you'll also experience an exclusive recital of his music and visit the famous Fantoff Stave Church, built entirely of wood in 1150 and moved to its current site in 1883. Now let's discover a bit more about the life, works and music of Edvard Grieg. Majestic scenes on canvas. Local culture, music, and traditions. In the 19th century, Norwegian Romanticism set out to preserve these elements of national identity. This patriotic movement inspired the imaginations of all Norwegians, including Edvard Grieg, who painted the essence of Norway with music, often incorporating elements of folk songs and always displaying Norway's wildness. You can hear that he's either on the top of some mountains or he has his back to the mountains and looks out to the sea. Grieg's love of nature led him to create his own sanctuary, Trollhaven. In this tranquil setting, his spirit and creativity soared. Grieg needed to be in the nature. He composed barely nothing when he was in a city. Grieg spent summers amid this beauty with his wife Nina always at his side, writing fresh and intriguing compositions to take on tour once the snows began to fall. The winter season Grieg spent down in Europe and of course he met a lot of influential people there and he invited them to come back to see him in Norway during the summer. They brought their wives, their children, even their servants. Grieg's escape was the tiny composer's hut, a place of solitude where he spent countless hours breathing life into notes on paper. He left his guests in the morning after breakfast and went down there and, and worked, coming up only for meals. So he wasn't that social with his guests after inviting them. Today the composer's hut appears virtually unchanged and includes a subtle reminder that while Grieg is remembered as larger than life, he was actually quite a diminutive man. When he composed down at the studio, there was an upright, normal piano, and to sit right at the piano, he needed to sit on something. And he used to sit on the collected piano sonatas of Beethoven. Luckily for Grieg and us, Beethoven composed 32 sonatas, so it's a fairly thick book. Edvard Grieg spent 22 summers creating masterpieces while wrapped in the beauty of Trollhaven. And one wonders what would have come of the man without the place. We refer to 
Trollhagen his home as his best opus. It really reflects his personality. You can play Greek music everywhere, but the atmosphere, the idea of this man who built the house, that is something that you only can find within these walls. To be here and hear the music where it was created, it's really special. Edvard Grieg left an amazing musical legacy, and we look forward to sharing with you more about the man and his gift. And here we are, it's day 15, it's the end of the cruise, and look at that beautiful shot of the Brigham area of Bergen, absolutely spectacular. If you have enough time, we have a great combination itinerary called Baltic Jewels in the Midnight Sun. It lasts 29 days and takes in the cruise I've just described, plus the best of the Baltic region, including the likes of Stockholm, Helsinki and St. Petersburg. Or, if you'd like to see the beauty of Norway in the winter time, think about our In Search of the Northern Lights voyage, which departs between January and March and gives you a unique opportunity to try and view the Northern Lights. It doesn't have to be time to say goodbye yet, of course. We have a few extensions you can add on to make the most of your time in this region. There's lots to do in the Bergen area, and one day doesn't do it justice. So we offer a two-night extension where you can explore independently. It's a very compact city. It's very easy to get your way around. And I'd recommend that you take a walk to the top of Mount Floyd for some spectacular views. Or you can, of course, get to the top by funicular railway. You can experience Iceland and the famous Blue Lagoon on this three-night extension. Or explore Norway's capital city, Oslo, on this two-night extension. Feature in a scenic train ride across stunning scenery. You've experienced Norway from the sea. This is a unique opportunity to explore the interior of this country before spending time in the vibrant city of Oslo. And although I mentioned the three-night extension in Iceland earlier, we also have our ultimate five-night Iceland experience to choose from. Welcome back, and I do hope you enjoyed that short presentation of Inter Midnight Sun Itinerary. Now, we only operate that in the peak summer months to get the best of the Midnight Sun. So for availability, please visit viking.com or contact our contact centre who can give you the latest information and availability. So thank you for watching and I do hope to see you again on Viking TV in the very near future. Thank you.